Granny used to tell me all the time Sparks when feet and preparation combine The road been right here all this time But you gotta look with more than your eyes And the small axe Jesse Royal representing for I just star mindset Rich forever The last CI. First. Every time. Yes, I saw it before. But they are just a. Uh, Live and direct in a corner. You don't know, Akuma Village. <laughs> the Reggae Headquarters. Yes, over there right now. When they ride on the seafront. Yeah, man. The wind, the wave, the sea. In on the background. See? Rastafari. Them say the Atlantic Ocean behind us. But we know it as the Ethiopian Ocean because True. the whole of Africa A Ethiopia. is Ethiopia. For real, for real. Rastafari. So we have to greet the people in the divine name of his Imperial Majesty, Emperor Hill Selassie. So first, Empress Lenin. First. Warm welcome to the Mindset Program. Today we have a surgical life on the mindset. A reggae artist, a foundation artist within Ghana reggae scene. Zane, a virgin who have been doing this thing for years, for top of years. And it's a great honor to have the hype on the program today, a surgical. Man as I respect, warm welcome. Give thanks, I just uh, give thanks for this opportunity. You know? And before me say anything, make me say welcome to Ghana, I just us. You don't know. At the motherland, you know, it's good you touch the field and, and come to Kwago. And with there, glad we have a peace on the mindset program in Ghana. You know, say me and the I link up on the internet for mindset and everything. But right now you bring it to us physical in Ghana. Yeah man, and we say big up and respect for this move yeah. Yeah man, we're there. My name is Osajifu, a reggae artist and international recording reggae and dancehall artist from Ghana. Yeah man, we're there. Yeah man. Talk to me about the reggae scene right now in Ghana. What is, what is the pressing point right now when it comes to reggae? and Rastafari movement within Ghana now. What is the pressing point? Yeah, man. You know, Ghana people love reggae music. You know, when I say reggae music, talk about I and I as black people, African people. It's the only music that puts some respect and uplift I and I as people. So all African people love reggae music. But there are some but most of the artists in Ghana now, most of us need to do our own thing through the industry when it comes to sharing the national gig. Now agree blah, you know, yeah man. Even when the system wants to do the reggae music, they want the reggae that has no conscious elements, reggae that has no Rasta elements. You know, because since I was a youth, I know that artists like Bob Marley, Bon Wheeler, Peter Tosh, uh, Morgan Heritage, Sisla, Anthony B. We know that all them artists are Rasta. Though we know that reggae music is business, but we cannot dispute the fact that Rasta has made a big mark in our reggae music. But in Ghana reggae scene you now, most of the artists we are Rasta, we must do our own thing because the industry is not accepting us to be Rasta and be reggae artists. They will say reggae is not Rasta. Fine, we know reggae music is music. Just like in Jamaica, we have Barry Salmon, we have Busy Signal, we have artists like Sanchez, we have Richard Stevens, we have uh, Christopher Martins. All them artists, them, they don't have the dreadlocks, but they are doing their thing. And we have artists like Sizzler, Capleton, 
Coco T, them to doing their thing, showing that the music knows no discrimination. But in Ghana, when them say reggae is not Rasta, they mean reggae of total elimination of all Rasta elements. They're not like songs we are yellow of Eilis last. Sometimes I see it problematic because you can't be an African and you don't like people yelling up Eilis Lassie. Because Eilis Lassie has, has done a lot for African people, you know. Eilis Lassie, coronation is a very significant date that we must tell the rest of the world. You know, Eilis Lassie represents international morality. He initiated fundamental human rights. But Ghana, you sing about Eilis Lassie and the industry players them get best. You know? When they are doing awards, songs that yell of Eilis Lassie in Chroma now get a position in their award. They only want romance music. You know, we know that we love the Empress them, but apart from loving the Empress them, Africa is a place that we must address the plight of the people because Wolipa people are going through poverty. Wolipa, the government them corrupt. So some of us choose to address these kind of things in the music. But the industry don't like that, except we do we want it. You know, unlike Jamaica, where we know that reggae music, holy parastas are into reggae music and they are accepted and doing their thing. So, the business now, in Ghana now, I can say, the industry has made reggae business a bonus to the non-reggae players, like the Afrobeat artists them and the high life artists them. We do one reggae or two reggae. They always choose those artists above those who are into reggae music full time and especially if you are Rasta they don't want any Rasta vibe in the music you know so these are some of the challenges that we are going through within the Ghana reggae music circles so Sajifu as an artist I say if, if they won't book me then I'll book myself so most of the things that I do are things that I have hand in it you know because the whole thing is like, even though every artist are do them thing, but there is something we call national key. Like when there is when it's uh, independence of Ghana, and there's a big concept. Then we know that like all the journalists must have a peace. Just like in Jamaica, Independence Day, you see sometimes 50 or 100 artists. Because they know that this is the time to give every artist a blind. You know, because this is a national key that we must make sure that every artist must have a peace idea. But they always sideline the reggae people them. And even the concept is about independence. And you know say independence, a Rasta man thing, you know, a Rasta people are dealing with independence. We are dealing with repatriation. Even there is a big festival in Ghana called Afro Nation, which is which is like a homecoming concert. It's a concert for our brethren and sisters in the diaspora coming home. So we do a big concert for them. So in that regard. The concert should deal with artists that promote repatriation so that the concert can connect with the people. But even them give the same concert to the Afrobeat artists then. We now say nothing about repatriation. We are saying about money, are saying about planes and things. So though the Afro nation they say it's homecoming, but Rasta people are the people talking about Pan-African, talking about repatriation. So like we all know that like, this homecoming concert is supposed to be a concert that will inculcate, even not only reggae, I and I, they must inculcate I and I in it, so that everybody can have a peace. Because homecoming and reggae are inseparable, you know. Marcus Garvey and reggae music are inseparable. Pan-African and reggae music are inseparable. Eilis Lassie, Kwame Nkrumah and reggae music are inseparable. So right now we see, say, they've, they've changed the face of reggae music in Ghana. You know, because when I was a child, I told my mama that she should give me money. She should give me some little money to go and record a reggae song. But my mother tell me that her money now appear for no Rasta music. You know, because her mama them know that reggae music are Rasta music. But now that reggae music turn up in Ghana and become business, them say Rasta can't have a piece in it. They don't want anything we are talking about Rasta. You know, when you check uh, 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 Jacob Miller, 
jealous can't leave in a tournament yard. You check more gun heritage. Tell me how come down in Jamaica so many people still a fight Rasta. All them kind of songs is accepted in Jamaica, you know, and, and it's accepted in the mainstream. But Ghana, they don't like them kind of song there. They don't like song that is talking about Rasta. They don't like song that is talking about Eilis Lassie. Them say you are making the music like a religion. You know, so these are some of the challenges that we are facing in Ghana reggae music. You know, they, they, they are discriminated with the music. You see that thing? Because we know that Rasta has made a big mark in reggae music that they should sideline us. Even I could say Rasta own reggae music in as much as everybody can do it. Because I know Bunny Wheeler, Peter Tosh, Burning Spear, Coco T, Morgan Richard, Sizzler, Anthony B, Keir Bolton, Mighty Diamonds. All these people are Rasta in reggae music. So we have majority of Rasta people that talking about the Pan-African vibe, talking about social vibe, social commentary vibe in reggae music. But Ghana is not doing it like that. Even there was a time Graham Morgan was in Ghana. And I approached him with this thing. Yeah man, I approached him with this thing that reggae and Rasta. Because in Ghana, when them say reggae is not Rasta, we know reggae is music. But we cannot dispute the fact that Rasta has made a big mark in reggae music. And whenever somebody says reggae is not Rasta, that means they, they want to water down the vibes because Rasta attack the real issues in the music. So I confronted Graham Smogan about that. And, and he made me know that reggae is not Rasta. And even Tooth Herbert coined the word reggae and Tooth Herbert is not Rasta. And but I knew he got me wrong because all what I was trying to let him know that they are trying to take Rasta people out of the business in Ghana. You know, because we never discriminate against anybody that them can't do reggae music. We know reggae music is for all, but them can't take Rasta. As Rasta is the person who spearheaded reggae music internationally. We all know that Bob Marley is a Rasta man. Peter Tosh was a Rasta man. You see that thing? But the Ghana reggae thing there, they want to do a reggae which has no Rasta element. They want to do reggae that doesn't talk about the Pan-African vibe, that doesn't talk about repatriation. They want only romance. When you check Ghana, all the reggae award songs are all romance songs. You see that thing? So these are some of the things that is hindering the progress of Ghana reggae music. Because most of the artists that are talking about the Rasta element in the music, they are very good artists that can represent Ghana globally. But through the industry, you don't want to accept the Rasta stardom. That the Rastas becoming superstars in Ghana. So they will do the reggae business, but they will make it a bonus for the Afrobeat artists. Them. You know, we do the reggae. Stone Boy them do one, two, or three reggae. Shatawale them do one, two, or three reggae. But we do reggae full time. You know, we do reggae full time. That is the genre that we depend. We never switch about that. But when there is business, they don't give it to the artists Then we are doing the reggae full time. Then they will add the business as a bonus to the artists them who doesn't represent reggae music. So you think um, Stone Boy made a statement last year that reggae is um, originated from Africa. And I agree with him. And that's that. How do you see it? Yeah, man, I agree with him in a way because we can't make his, we can't mix up history with the music. You know, because you know so our brothers and sisters were, were taken from this place to Jamaica. Yeah. And the, some of the tribulations they went through in Jamaica brought forth reggae music. You know, and it'll feed them over the soul. You see that thing? Right now, though Jamaicans are from Africa, but we cannot say reggae music because they didn't create reggae music when they were here. They brought reggae music when they were in Jamaica. You see that thing? They didn't create reggae music when they were here. 
and it has become a source of income for a lot of Jamaicans. So I know that definitely they will come out to defend it, you know, because they didn't create reggae music. Jamaicans never dispute that they are not Africans. But, but we can't mix up history with the music. But the music express a lot of our history as a people. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. The music, of course, the music talk about Africa. The music talk about the exodus of the movement from Yasso to Jamaica and everything. But there is one thing. I am talking from a realistic point of view. Because right now we have perfect Giddy money. We have Cape Hood and Sizzler them. Right now they are not here with us. You know, they are in Jamaica. Even though they come from here, but they are in Jamaica at the moment, at, at one little island, that they are doing reggae music. Though we know that reggae music has become global because we have gentlemen from Germany that do reggae music. We have big songs like Mighty Crown from Japan into reggae music. So reggae music now is a global thing. But I cannot say reggae music originated from Africa. I can't say that because though our brothers from here, but they created reggae music. Why they didn't create reggae music with the Africans at home? So you disagree with Stone Boy Five? Yeah, it depends the contest input it. You know, if we say if we input him, should I put it in a contest that Jamaicans are the originators of reggae, but as long as they are brothers and sisters from Africa, then 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 it's like that. Yeah, you know, so because we are we have no role that we play in reggae music. Because even when you come to Africa, the kind of music we do is different from the music we are doing in Jamaica. Because when Bob Marley was doing Buffalo Soldier, Africa were doing something else. When Bob Marley was singing about Buffalo Soldier and redemption songs and all them kind of things, Africa we were dealing with a different kind of music. It's, it wasn't what Bob Marley was saying at the same thing we were saying here. You see that thing? So though Jamaicans are Africans, but we can do the reggae too, but taking it from them completely, I think it's not fair. You know, because everybody are doing reggae music. Japanese are doing it, Germans are doing it, and nobody has ever made such a statement. Lucky you never made such a statement. Alpha Blondie never made such a statement. I am a reggae artist, but I took the inspiration from Bob Marley. Through some of the things Bob Marley them say, through some of the things Peter Tosh them say, at that give me the inspiration to become reggae. Because Africa, we were not dealing with them kind of vibe. You see that thing? So, Jamaicans are our brothers duo. But when it comes to creating reggae music, they created it over the song. And not your song. So it's like the movement that they went through, the tribulation they went through on the plantation and then is what they brought it into the music. You see that thing? So we must check the contest which they would, you know, I know that the, the whole thing brought a whole big confusion between the Africans. I was even a bit worried that because as a reggae artist in the business, all of us needed to make an endorsement at a certain point. So we are all thinking that can this bring Maybe the Jamaican songs just feel like, yo, when we start to endorse the African boy, them, them stuff you are going like, them want to take over the thing and, you know, because when Africans claim reggae, then what the Jamaicans are going to eat after? Because only for Jamaicans, reggae music is them food and everything. I know that's why some people come out to defend it, but not necessary that they are not Africans. Do you think Jamaicans need to come home to Africa, Ghana? Yeah, man, but, but for now, not everybody can come because some people don't even have the resources to come. You know, you yeah. think everyone should come? If there is an opportunity, but I, it's, that is not going to work. I don't think everybody will just move. Somebody like I just start come, those who have the opportunity. But if they are not even coming, they can have it in mind. They can have the repatriation and the mindset. Then they to defend Africa as their home and everything. Because true, only for Jamaicans are poor people. Not everybody is rich. And to come to Africa is not you need money and all that. You see that you, know, you can't just even come here without any investment. So what we need to do is to have that connection. That's the most important thing. Those who can afford 
can come and help build up the place because the connection, the link between Ghana and Jamaica is very important. You know, that is why we shouldn't bring any confusion. Because reggae music, Africa reggae music, now what are we eat food after reggae music? Gentlemen from Germany eat food. We have artists from Sweden that play reggae music. Even these white people, soldier, soldier band or something, we win the Grammy. You know? So Jamaicans established reggae, but reggae music now has become global. So the credit, we can't take it from Jamaicans. Though they are from Africa, but they created reggae music whilst they were in Jamaica. What's next for Asadi? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I have an EP coming up. Authentic EP. You know, proper production EP. Because with this time we must put more quality into the music. So uh, I'm working on an EP. Social commentator EP. You know, EP where I talk about the social issues in Ghana. You see that thing? So people should watch. Uh, I will release it this year. Later by June. My EP will be released. You know, so we are telling the, we, we, all the people out there globally that them to support reggae music because reggae music is positive music. Reggae music don't know about discrimination, don't know about who is white, who is black. Kobo Malo was singing one loop for all humanity. You know, so let's keep supporting reggae music. Yeah, man, because this time, Afrobeat step up. Now Afrobeat become the biggest thing. But we can't show reggae music away. You know? Because this argument is not coming. Afro big is big. Like in Ghana, for instance, the people that always follow trends. When something becomes big, they think you everybody should throw everything away and go follow what is big. There was another time I had an argument with one radio presenter. I said even people who play jazz are still playing their jazz. Yeah man, though jazz people are not too loud like that. The same thing like reggae people, and no matter how big Afrobeat gets, reggae artists will still do their reggae music. But what we need to do is to create opportunity for all. You know, we can't be following only one trend and say Afrobeat. Because we can't throw reggae music away. Reggae music sing about blackness, they sing about upliftment of I and I. So we can't throw it away for some music we now say non we Music has it about blinks, riches, that we know that Africans do have a lot of poor people. But we are following music that are terrible, only riches. You know, we should follow music that will bring balance between the rich and the poor. So the people that must support reggae music, and they should watch out for my social commentator album coming out somewhere in June. Boom, big up. The people can find you. Yeah, man, them can find me on social media. Them can find me on Facebook as Osage for Ghana. But we also have a fan page where we put put music and thing. That is Osajifu official. You can also find me on YouTube at Osajifu GH. You can find me on Twitter at Osajifu GH. You can find me on Instagram at Osajifu One dot Ghana. And my music is also on other. For thousands of years, humans have been searching studying the plants around us, working to create herbal healing solutions, blended with the best from Mother Nature, a gateway to healing and a better life. This is the answer. See you on the next video. I guess not the mindset. Smash that subscribe button. See you on the next video. I guess not the mindset.